So this is the tracker jacket uh, collaborated between Jacquard by Google and Levi's. It has this um, sensor cuff that can sense different swipe up or swipe down and double tap movements. And um, yeah, Very and cool. we can use it to play music. Cool. That's great. Commence the teardown. Let's do this tearing down thing. So we got this apart. Um, there are really three elements. There was the tag, the cradle that it connects to and the connector, and then the actual capacitive component. I guess starting with this tag, um, they have this incredible uh, outer layer, which has the metal connections in molded. And you can tell they're in molded because the plastic sort of weaves in between the metal. Um, the opposite side is also a nice piece of molding. It's a, uh... It's got lots of local thinning on it, lots of actions in the tool, and they've got um, uh, a rubber layer that's molded inside of it to create the button action and the seal. Something that we've never seen before is, we thought this was a patch or planar patch style design. And we can tell that connects to the, it would be a, like a monopole um, transmit line on the antenna, and then this is the ground connection that mates with this little pogo pin right here. So they're able to um, not waste any space on the board with the chip antenna or a PCB style, and um, yeah, sort of get the whole antenna component above the, the layer. To mate this board with the contacts on the outside, they have these really beautiful tiny pogo pins. Um, they're all shorter than the tallest component on the board, which means that the pogos don't make the board any any bigger mm -hmm. um, and it just becomes a really nice and secure way to meet with the outside housing and get good contact. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, there's this uh, copper ground plane thing and we think that's because we're getting uh, communications over long wires up into this uh, housing you have a chance for like, creating uh, interference with, with RF mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. I think that's a bit of shielding for those. Mm -hmm. yeah. The board itself, there's a lot going on. Um, it looks like there's multiple MCUs. You've got the Bluetooth MCU, um, at least one accelerometer. Mm -hmm. You have the LED. It's just packed with so much stuff. There's a there's a lot going on in this. Cool. It's, it's lovely. And then mating with that is something that is also <clears throat> well made. Uh, this is the connector side. Um, these are uh, three molded pieces. There's no sealing right here. So this is designed to get wet and when it dries, the any shorts would be removed. Um, there is some conformal coating over the leads where it, it connects, but this allows you to have a sort of like very robust, like non-fussy um, connection point inside the jacket. Mm -hmm. um, that's very much in contrast to this part, which is as sealed as anything has ever been sealed before, this feels like you could take it deep sea diving. Sorry, from this patch is um, Woven's um, capacitive touch sensor that it uses um, this conductive or resistive fiber and wove them as weft, and then leave this mm. side out and somehow like. Um, like adhesive them down so that it can go all the way to this PCB um, and they soldered it to the board. We can see some solder joints here. And then on this board, um, it has vibration motor and we think there is an MCU here because from the silk screen on the connector, we saw that there is um, interrupt pin on three volt USB vo uh, volt, um, five volt and ground and SCL and SDA pins, which means it's using I2C communication between this patch and the tag. This module is talking to this patch over the pogo pins here. Um, it has um, six pins. Um, it's for I2C communication plus um, an interrupt pin. And it has two voltages, one is three volt one is five volt, mm -hmm. and um, I'm assuming because um, it runs vibration motor, probably it uses the 
USB voltage for powering the motor and use three volts for uh, or three point three volts for logic. Mm -hmm. Interesting that they wouldn't have put the the uh, step up inside here. Mm -hmm. It's funny that they put it all the way up yeah. there. Um, okay, so that means that this is talking to here, but because we have how many lines here? Ten lines. And we only have six um, pins. Six pins. That means that there has to be smarts here figuring that out and talking back to the module. Yeah. Um, so the construction of this piece is interesting. What they would have done is they take this uh, sealed wire, comes up into this housing. Uh, this is just a tray. This is not a housing, it's a tray. And the tray holds the PCB and the PCB is soldered to here, it's soldered this lead, and then they put it in some kind of mold and they do a, um, they mold over it. And this can be like a Henkel style material. They have a, a number of like materials that are literally designed for creating deep sea electronics. And I think they might have used one of those materials. They're really, really expensive. Um, so you use them very sparingly and only in, in certain parts of it. Is yeah, it's funny how they chose to not really waterproof this module or the connector, but only this. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess the connector has nothing nothing here is going to short and be mad mm -hmm. like they'll short right. out and then they'll dry out um and then this you can remove mm -hmm. and then this they've just gone to town on mm -hmm. um yeah. and it looks like it would survive many many washings why do you think they put a woven material here mm. why not just have it be um this uh you know laminated plastic on both sides so i think because um the woven structure gives it a lot more flexibility. And um, even though it can still feel it's a little bit rigid, but this is much better than, let's say, a Kapton tape or a layer of flex PCB uh, with exposed traces. And also, I guess like there's a lot of challenge in actually weaving these conductive fiber into denim. Um, it's the hardest material. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the hardest material. And denim has this uh, specific twill structure. And this is a plain weave. So um, I think if we want to weave that into the denim, there's a lot of like pattern design right. involved to um, get the functionality of the conductivity. At the same time, it's a nice fabric that you really need to wear. This is like a typical issue in new technologies. So this right here that Ted's holding is really soft and it's supple and it, you could sew it into yoga clothing and you could actually have like this sensing technology in, in a nice soft good. But the problem is, is it doesn't work without this hard module, this long wire, this big clip. And so like all of the suppleness of that material is outdone by the interface with the, the electronic piece. And so until they can really, uh, push how they're doing the electronic, maybe mm -hmm. through like, I don't know, ribbon connected, like uh, Rigiflex boards mm -hmm. on like multiple modules. Yeah. It's just not gonna be able to fit into anything that isn't a really stiff garment mm -hmm. like this. Right. And then because it's a stiff garment, you don't really need this fancy supple material. Much like the Google glasses, where I was kind of disappointed that the entry into the market was as a fashion object, I saw them way more as like a utility device for maybe, um, you know, surgeons or people who are chefs working with their hands or even us soldering circuits and you want the schematic here. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to see a, uh, yeah, more of like utility wear out of this. I'm interested in uh, seeing more exploration on the textile side, like now, uh, we can weave conductive uh, thread and can we use different weaving structure to create uh, soft electronic components or using material that's like electro um material to weave textile that has more functions than uh, than capacitive touch sensing. Um, there are accelerometer that has machine learning functionality that would be interesting that um, it would be like enhancing what we have um, right now is a fitness tracker or like all the accelerometer using used in wearables, but in the future it might have more functionalities um, mm -hmm. than just track the movements. That's a good point. And this tag, which we haven't mentioned, is another uh, product that we had created for Lumia. I think what's interesting about that is it is an activity tracker, but it's not meant to track humans' uh, movement, more uh, the usage of clothing. 
what happens is this very thin things get sewn into your garment and it has an RFID uh, transmitter on it. And what you can do is you can scan it and it will upload all of the data from this tag. We think this could be really interesting for companies that like care about their products that they put in the world. People like Barber or Mission Workshop who have like great warranties and often do like repair work on their stuff. And so um, being able to get a garment in and see how it's been used, uh, it's, it's actually really helpful. Um, so let's say you get a lot of uh, jackets in and they all are like super worn out and you're trying to figure out why these jackets are getting worn badly and you look at the data on the tag and you're realizing that people are drying these on high several times a week. Now you can choose to either engineer something that works well on a dryer that's run on high, or you can do a bit of design communication to get people to dry their clothes on a line, or you know any other kind of design intervention. But having that data is really powerful in connecting you with like the lives and behaviors of your consumers. Thanks everyone for joining us for this teardown. Thank you, Jing Wen, so much for coming out. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye.